Hello again, and welcome to another FMOD and Unity tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at changing parameters or controlling parameters uh, with an external controller as opposed to keyboard and mouse which we've been uh, using up to this point. More specifically, I want to change the pitch of an audio file that's playing with an analog stick on a controller. Um, in my case I'm using a PS4 controller, but you can use pretty much almost any controller you wish. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I actually got a request, um, so thank you very much to that person who asked uh, if I could help them out with this. Um, please let me know if there's anything else uh, I can help you out with. Um, I will say now I'm definitely no expert when it comes to FMOD and Unity, but you know I like, I like the challenge, You know I like to do a bit of research and see what I can find. So if there's anything you want to see, please hit send a comment in the uh, YouTube section, send a comment, post a comment in the, down below, or send me an email if you like. Um, so, I think that's everything for the intro anyway, so let's jump straight into this. Uh, we're going to start with FMOD, uh, and I'm going to quickly breeze over this, because there's not a lot going on here, um, and it's stuff we've all done before. Hopefully in the future I will do some more videos that's a bit more FMOD heavy, but for now, same old stuff, but, uh, you know, that's all we really need. So, here we go, so, 2D event, created there, right click in, and I've called that test. I've just put, imported some uh, music into FMOD which I'm going to play in a bit, and I've just looped it here by right-clicking the black bar and clicking loop region. I've created my own parameter and I've called it pitch uh, with values ranging from minus one to one. And then if I go to this drop-down menu here, I've automated the uh, a pitch shifter plugin, which I added. Uh, so I've automated the pitch so that when the parameter is at minus one, the pitch will uh, double in value and it should rise by an octave. And then when the parameter is at one, uh, it should drop by an octave and half the value. Uh, and that's literally all there is to FMOD. So, good, done. <laughs> so now let's jump into Unity. So first what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that our controller is, um, or any inputs we send through our controller is being received by Unity. So the way we do that is go by, into project settings, input, and we get our input manager, which we have looked at a bit before. Um, when you open up your input manager, you'll probably have a load of different arrays here, things like jump, probably see things like horizontal, vertical, mouse X, mouse Y. Um, I've got rid of all of them by changing the size to zero or one or whatever, uh, in my case one, and I've just used, I've just created my own array and called it left stick Y, uh, because that's all I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I'm just going to be moving the left analog stick in the Y axis, so up and down. So as I push it up, the pitch will increase, and if I push it down, the pitch will decrease. Um, but if you want to keep all those things, you can. Um, I'm pretty sure the second horizontal and the second vertical um, array you see that will control the left analog stick on a PS4 controller anyway um, and then for the right analog stick I'm not 100% sure to be honest I'll see if I can find some tutorials and post them in the comments uh, sorry in the description um, so so what I've done is I've increased the sensitivity to one because I, I just want to make sure it's being you know received uh, to make sure it's uh, picking up the uh, left analog stick what you want to do is change axis to, or make sure axis is set to Y axis. And also make sure the type is set to joystick axis, so it receives any joystick information, which is the whole controller, basically. Um, so if I wanted to control the left analog stick on the X axis, so moving it left and right, I would change that to X axis. With the right analog stick, you want to use third axis for the X axis and fourth axis for the Y. Um, that's for PS4. I think for Xbox 360... I think 7th and 8th is left analog stick, and then something else, maybe 9th and 10th is right. Uh, and then Xbox One, I have no idea. <laughs> They're all sort of different for each controller. And again, I'll try and post some stuff in the description to help you out. But basically, you just want to do a quick little search online. It probably It's probably on the Unity website. Just whatever controller you're using, find out what access you need to select. And then I think that's all there is for the input manager. So, with that done, um, all I've done is created an empty game object and added a script to that, and that's just going to play our audio. Um, I think, let's create a new script. We'll create a new script and go through what I did together. So I'm just going to create a C-sharp C script. C-sharp. And I'm going to call that controller 2. Not spell it right, of course, because why would I? Give that a sec to, <laughs> give that a sec to save and load. And then I'm just going to quickly go back to my controller test game object and chuck that on top of it. Oh, if my thing will let me. It's been a bit slow today. There we go. Get rid of that because I don't want to use that anymore. And then I'm going to click that and open it. 
So I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff into the script uh, just to quickly go through what I did. So the first thing is some fmod uh, variables. Let's get rid of all this because I don't need this just yet. So I paste that in. So first thing we've done is, first thing I've done rather is stuff we've done before. I've got a public string event which will allow us to select the event in fmod um, in Unity which we'll see in a bit. Uh, and then I've created an event instance and a parameter instance. I've called that audio and pitch. So first function I'm going to use or create rather is an awake function. So this is the first thing that's going to happen when we hit play. Uh, the audio parameter I've connected to the event or rather the public string named event so we can find our event in fmod. And then I've also created, yeah, I can't speak today. <laughs> I've also connected the pitch parameter instance to the audio event instance, okay? Uh, which as you can see here, I've quoted pitch because that's what we've called or I've called my um, parameter in fmod, which I cannot stress enough. You've got to make sure they're spelled correctly and they use the same capital letters and all that stuff. Uh, it, <laughs> while I was trying to set this video up, I was <laughs> I had a little error pop up and I had no idea why. And it turns out I put the T and the C the wrong way around in fmod. And I was digging through the script like, why is this not working? Losing my mind. So make sure they work or they're spelled correctly. Next function we're going to add is avoid start. So uh, this will be called on the very first frame that the game runs. And uh, this is just going to play the event audio.start. That's all it's going to do because um, I just wanted to play in the loop just for this example. So, next one we want to do is an update function. So let's add that in. Oh, put it. Oh, whoops. Hold on. Hey, there we go. <laughs> so avoid update function. Um, I just want to copy in some more things. Let's copy this in as well. And then I'll quickly explain what they do. And then just add the thing there. Cool. So the debug debug.log. Um, I'm basically going to send um, every frame a message to the console saying what value are, is our input access left stick wire, which we created earlier. So basically, I'm, I want to determine how far I've pushed the stick forward or backwards in a value. Um, luckily for us, the input manager uses float values, so that's great. We could just use values to you know determine how far we're pushing it. Um, so yeah, that's going to appear in the console, and then I've also set the pitch by putting pitch.setValue, which is our parameter here, to that same um, that same uh, array in the input manager, input.axis, left stick y. Um, so, if I quickly go back to, in fact, let's save this first. Save, jump back to Unity. Quickly go back to the uh, input manager. Now, I think, I think this is how it works. So when I um, push the left analog stick up or positive in the y direction, I think that, well not positive, when I push it forward, uh, I think that comes, that would be represented by a minus one. So when it's all the way forward, that'd be represented as a minus one. When it's all the way back, that's a positive one. Um, if, well, we'll test it in a minute to see, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, same for y, for the x-axis rather, if I change that to x-axis and then pushed the left analog stick to the right, um, I think that will be one, and then to the left will be minus one, or it might be the other way around. But yeah, basically, that's how it works. So it, one end of the analog stick will be a positive one, and the other will be a minus one. So with that in mind, um, that's why I've set that value, whatever it may be, we, we're not sure yet because I'm not quite running the game. Whatever that value is, will determine the value of our parameter, which is hence why, if I go back to fmod, I've set the values as minus one and one. Cool. So let's jump back into model develop. I'm just going to double check I saved it. Yep. So let's go back to Unity. So controller test. Uh, I haven't found our event yet. So let's click the search bar, click test. And let's run this thing. And hopefully, let's clear the console first. Hopefully, we should hear our audio play. And hopefully, we should be able to bend the pitch. So I've got my controller here plugged in with a USB. So let's see if this works. Just give it a sec to load. <laughs> There we go, so it works. So, as you can see, what I was trying to highlight, I didn't want to speak because I figured you wouldn't hear me, but when I pushed the stick all the way forward, we got a, uh, we got a minus one, and when I pushed it all the way back, we got a one. 
Hence why I made it so that in F mod, minus one doubles the pitch because I wanted to push the stick forward and double the pitch. Um, let's go back to Unity. Now, you may have noticed that when I wasn't doing anything, we'd be getting these weird, weird little numbers and the pitch would change almost a, just a little tiny bit. Um, now, you might find you get the same thing. I'm not sure if it's my controller or all controllers do this, but it doesn't quite register zero exactly. It might just register a little bit over or a little bit um, under, which could be a little bit of a problem. If we want to the pitch to a 100% not change when we're not touching the analog stick, it might be a problem because obviously it might change. So, a little workaround is uh, if I jump back to our script, I'm going to quickly copy in some more um, script. And just update our void update function. So there we go, change that. So debug dot log still the same. So as opposed to always saying every frame we want the um, pitch parameter to, or rather, sorry, we want the left stick on our controller to set the parameter, set the value of the parameter in F mod. Um, instead, we we're going to say that we only want it to set the value um, of the parameter if it's being pushed or if Sorry, yeah, if it's being pushed. If it's not being pushed, then we just want the value to be zero. So no matter whether it's like 0 0.001, or one, because we're not touching it, it will be zero. And the way we've done that is we assume that if the value is um, in between minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, we're assuming that the stick's not being touched, so, that, so then we go, okay, set the value to zero. Probably explain that in a really awkward way, but hopefully you get that. So with if statements, I've said if... Uh, if the stick or the value of left stick y is less than minus 0 0.1 or if it's greater than 0 0.1 then run the same thing we did last time pitch set value to um, the stick else if it's not if it's in between those two values then just make it zero you know so hopefully that avoids the problem of it changing slightly on its own without us touching it so let's save that jump back into unity let's quickly clear all that and let's play this again now hopefully if i do nothing it should just stay zero so i'm just going to stop it there so as you can see the value is changing on its own as we expected but the pitch isn't changing at all which is great which is what we want so let's just play this one more time So I think my thing just gave me a message because of you know my hard drive's just full. <laughs> it decided to interrupt the video, but hopefully that demonstrates you know what we were trying to achieve. So when it's zero, um, even when it's a little bit above or below zero, um, we get nothing. The pitch doesn't change um, because obviously it needs to be above or below zero point one. Uh, but when we do push it above it, it the pitch increases or decreases. So hopefully uh, this helps some of you, and hopefully it helps the person who emailed me. It's been a bit of a weird one, but it's been really fun to try out and mess around with. Because, um, like I said, I'm not really messing around with controllers in Unity, so that was quite fun. Um, so let me know if you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you uh, what else you want to see, if anything at all. Um, and yeah, I think that's all there is to it. Like I said, hopefully I'm going to try and do some more Unity and FMod tutorials where we dive a bit more into the FMod scene, um, which would be great. So I've been Henry Scott. Thank you very much for watching.